welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. My name is Pyle, and today we are diving into what to do if your manifestation isn't here yet. So I want to talk about a couple reasons why your desire might not be here yet, some things you can actually do instead to help either shift your energy or call your desire in, and just some perspectives to help you as you're in the in-between phase, because I know that it feels like you're doing everything wrong when your desire isn't here yet. So let's talk about it. So say scenario wise, you have been manifesting for a little while. You've been writing affirmations. You feel like you've been doing all the right things and you're like, where the heck is my desire? One of the biggest reasons your desire might not be here yet. And this is from experience. I say this is because all of the manifesting you were doing, all the spiritual practice you were doing was in order to get the result. You weren't actually diving, letting yourself dive into the practice enough to enjoy the practice itself, but rather you were doing the practice as a means to an end. You were almost doing it as like a checklist item to just get it done so that your manifestation can come. And I don't say this to call you out. I say this to bring awareness to something I think a lot of us unconsciously do. We treat manifestation like it's school and we treat like our spiritual practice like it's homework that you just have to do. And you kind of just bypass it. You kind of just rush through it and you don't put all your effort in it because it's not that fun. Like who actually loves homework? Um, So I feel like that is one of the biggest reasons that your desire might not be here yet is because you're treating it like a chore. So as you're trying to get in alignment with that desire, you're actually not enjoying it at all. And you're just kind of doing it because you know you're supposed to do it. So there's a little bit of a misalignment there. And I'll talk about how to actually shift that in a little while. A different reason your desire might not be here yet is because you're simply searching for it. And I know that feels so obvious and people talk about this all the time, but listen to it in a way where it's not a personal attack. You're not doing anything wrong, but when you're in the vibration of searching, when you are looking, whether you're looking for someone to text you back, whether you're looking for a raise or you're looking for an email from your boss to confirm a job offer, whether you are waiting for some sort of results, like If you are kind of constantly looking and kind of peeking over your shoulder to see if it's there, it's almost like you don't believe it. And when you think about it, manifestation is all about that belief system. It is all about acting as if the reason people say that I know it's easier said than done. But the reason they say to act as if is because when you're in the mode of searching, searching creates more searching. It doesn't create receptivity. It doesn't create your desire. When you're in the current vibration of searching, you're literally just telling the universe, I want to search more. I'm going to search more. You're not actually displaying any trust in yourself in the process or the universe. So it's a very mixed signal um, thing to do. And I know it's natural. Um, I've done this time and time again where I'm manifesting something and I'm searching, I'm checking my numbers or I'm wait, looking at my email and I keep swiping down or maybe I'm waiting for a text from someone. And when we're doing that, we're in that state of, I hope it's true, I hope it's true. We're not in a state of, I know it's true and I believe it's true. Those are two very, very different energies and that is why people always say to detach because when you detach and you don't care, then your desire can come in because you're not actually searching because it's much easier to just completely disassociate than it is to trust and know with certainty that it's coming. So that's why a lot of people suggest detaching and I think detaching is great. However, it's also hard to do because you just put in all this effort. So another huge reason is because you're in that state of where is my desire? Once again, if you're like piled, then what do I do if I'm wondering where my desire is? That's why I'm listening to this episode. I'll give you a couple of tips on things you can do instead of looking. Um, And it's a list I come back to often. It's something I do often to help myself um, as I'm on the journey as well. And another reason your desire might not be here yet is because you actually might not feel like Not that you're not worthy of it, but that it's too good to be true. Sometimes we start manifesting because it feels so dreamy and that vision feels so big. And when it feels too good to be true, once again, it's similar to what I said earlier, you don't fully believe it. It feels out of reach. And 
if intuitively and internally, like not what you're faking it internally at your soul, if it feels like it's too good to be true, that means that you're not fully there yet. And there's things you can do to get there. You can totally get to a point where it feels like this is real. This can be mine, but you might just internally be a little bit, either it's too good to be true or I'm scared as to how my life will change because of it. There's upper limits that we like to hit. There's kind of ceilings that we like to break, but there's also upper limits that we hit. And I've actually had a ton of students message me. They're like, I literally manifested it, but I don't feel good. I'm literally scared to lose it now. So there's always little limiting beliefs that might just be kind of in your way um, to actually either receiving the desire or even enjoying it. So one thing for me I experienced when I was manifesting in my business was if I hit a certain level of success, I wouldn't be able to spend time with my family. I wouldn't have enough time for the people I love and the things I love. So I was unconsciously but subconsciously self-sabotaging i was not growing because i was too scared to grow because i was like what if i lose all that i've just created that i actually like so i would rather stay comfortable and not get uncomfortable in the unknown and a huge reason we tend to kind of not have our desires is because they doesn't feel normal it doesn't feel neutral there's such an energy charge behind it emotional and just like either anxiety based or excited based, but there's too much of a charge. And when there's too much of a charge that doesn't match your normal state, it's completely out of alignment once again. So those are a few reasons why your desire might not be here yet. And I can only talk about them because I've done every single one of these multiple times. And I've done them probably multiple times while manifesting multiple things, while manifesting just one thing. I've probably done all three of these. So don't feel like, oh no, it's not manifesting now. It's never going to manifest. That's false. Like what's meant for you will always come to you. It's just how long it takes in the 3D world. It's literally swirling around, but it's just waiting to kind of show up in that 3D world until you feel ready. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So a few things you can actually do while your desire is not here yet. Like, you know, it's not here. It's obvious that it's not here. It's not in the 3D. So then what? One thing that really, really helps me is diving into my spiritual practice, not to call in the desire, but to address the fear of the desire not being here. So let me kind of explain that. So I think sometimes we dive into a spiritual practice and we're like, okay, I want more money. Let me say some money affirmations. But what I think is even more powerful is when you know that you want money and when it's not here yet, what feelings are coming up? What fears are coming up? What insecurities are showing up? What limiting beliefs are coming up? That is what I focus my spiritual practice on. So kind of continuing on the money example, say there's a certain amount of money I'm manifesting and it's not here yet. And now I'm scared or I'm like, where the heck is it? What am I so scared of? Maybe I'm scared I won't be able to pay my rent. Maybe I'm scared that I won't be able to pay a certain bill. Maybe I'm scared that I will be broke or I can't pay off debt. So whatever those fears are, that's what I do my spiritual practice around. I do my spiritual practice and I kind of dive straight forward into the discomfort, into the things that are really scaring me. So that way I can say, I can actually address what's holding me back and what's scaring me about this desire and also understand why do I want this desire so bad? Because sometimes we have a blanket statement, right? We want money. We want a soulmate. We want a home, but our unique why is so randomly specific to us that it takes layers and layers of just self-reflection and asking yourself the right questions and letting yourself be honest about why you want that to really address what it is that the desire represents to you. For many people, money represents freedom, but like freedom in what? freedom in what sense and what is like that super particular vision, whether it's a picture you have in your head or an idea or a feeling that you have, what is that super specific vision, right? So for this money, maybe your vision is paying off this bill and getting debt free so that you can take a family trip to Italy. You know, like it might be such a specific long winded answer, but when you can finally admit that to yourself, there creates a lot more freedom. So one of the biggest tips is, when just kind of to wrap it up things you can actually do is dive right back into your spiritual practice but don't focus on the desire focus on why you want the desire and what scares you about not having the desire 
if you're talking about a soulmate, if you're scared that this guy isn't texting you back or you haven't heard back and you're in no contact, or you're getting ghosted or that you broke up, you're in heartbreak. What scares you about that? If you're scared of being alone, if you're scared that you're not loved, focus your spiritual practice on that. Focus your spiritual practice on what am I scared of with being alone? Do I just not like myself? Oh, let me focus my spiritual practice on actually creating love for myself. Or am I scared that I'm not lovable? What, what do I think is not lovable about me? Am I just judging myself? So get super, super intentional about what it is that it scares you so much that if this desire doesn't come in, because you'll really start to understand and you're going to clear some of these limiting beliefs that might be in the way of your desire coming. So it's kind of a win-win. Another thing you can do if your desire isn't here yet is allow yourself to remember that your current reality, because our current reality is usually what really messes with our head um, because you're like, I've done all this manifestation work. Where's my desire now? Realizing that your current reality is just one representation of things. There are so many other realities. There are so many other dimensions and this might be too woo woo for you. If you don't like it, just ignore this part, but remembering that your current reality was created from a past version of you. So all of the work that you're doing right now, it's actually going to shift your future and remembering that there is a little bit of a buffer time in our 3D world. In the 5D, things happen instantly, but in the 3D, there's a little bit of a buffer. And if you're someone who tends to use your current world as an indicator to how you feel, to what's true, to what's not true, and like your current world is your only reality, this will take a little bit of time to shift and to kind of broaden your perspective. And then instead of kind of looking at your 3D and being like, well, it's not here, so it's not working. Don't jump to that conclusion. Say it's not here in the 3D yet, but it is real in my head. It is happening in my mind. It is happening in my visions. It is happening in a different dimension, in a parallel universe or in the dreamscape. Whatever kind of theories resonate with you, remind yourself that your current reality, you created this maybe a week ago, maybe yesterday, but your current reality wasn't created from the thoughts that you're thinking right now. There's a little bit of a buffer time. So from a logical perspective, remember and kind of give yourself a little bit of peace to help you with that buffer time and say, okay, you know what? Maybe it's coming tomorrow. Maybe it's coming next week. And maybe I can drop the timing and remember that my current reality was created from a past version of me and to keep trusting that this current version of me is creating the reality that I desire and give yourself permission to trust that. Another thing you can do to kind of solidify these beliefs, right? We were talking about acting as if I was talking about how do you make it feel real? And one of the biggest things I like to do to make it feel real, it's a quick exercise I do is I journal on it. I grab my journal because I think it's hard to sometimes visualize. Like people say, visualize what the scenario is. If you can visualize, go ahead. But if you struggle with visualizing, this is a really good way to do it is imagine that you're watching your life as a movie and the manifestation has just arrived. What is it like? And just map out and write like a page in your journal as if you're telling a story about how the manifestation arrived. Now, when you're doing this, don't kind of stick to the fact that this is how it has to happen. More so focus on and realize like, oh my gosh, it is here. How exciting. And notice the little sensations and the feelings that come up. That's really what you're trying to tap into to remind yourself how good it can feel and remind yourself that there is possibilities of it being in a totally different way, maybe in an even better way. And maybe the manifestation itself is what you're thinking is a little bit too um, logical and maybe it's something that you couldn't even imagine and it's significantly better. And just an honest perspective that might help you. There is very few things um, in my life that I have like specifically, and I'm putting this in air quotes, correctly manifested. Like for example, um, I had a desire for like a house in a certain neighborhood and all of these things and we're not over there, but like the house that we're in now makes me way happier than I think that could have. And maybe that'll come in a different, like different, um, desire, but there's so few things that I have specifically correctly manifested, but 
I think that was such an important lesson for me to learn because everything that has come has been way better than I could have ever dictated. So there's like a really beautiful dance where it's like you be specific, you know what you want, but also like the universe can probably surprise you and give you way more of what you actually want in a much better way. So for example, like when meeting Tom, right, I knew I always wanted my parents and my in-laws to like be really close, something just, I've always wanted that. So I assumed, literally I assumed that could only happen with an Indian family. So for my entire life, I only dated Indian people and none of it worked out. I met Tom and I was like, well, sucks for my parents. Maybe this is not meant to be. Maybe it's not meant for my parents to be BFFs with my husband's parents. And I was so wrong where it's like, one, I was wrong about the Indian guy. I was correct that I, the true desire was that I wanted my parents and my husband's parents to be friends and to be really close friends and get along. But I was wrong in how that unfolded. I was wrong in assuming that it needed to be an Indian family. I was totally wrong with that. And nothing could have proved me, like nothing could have told me that it was possible. Nothing could have changed my mind about that because it was an assumption I had. So the only way I could have gone with it was falling enough in love with Tom and being like, well, maybe I'm not meant to have that. And I was okay with that in that moment, but then the desire still came. So it's kind of interesting how things work out like that, because sometimes we have these such strong attachments to exactly what our desire is. And the root of your desire is true. But sometimes we have these like subtle implications and assumptions that we pop on top of our desires that are actually unnecessary details. So like I had a desire of my family and my husband's family being besties. But I added personally, unconsciously, totally subconsciously, I would never have known this in the moment. I only can see this after the fact. But now with that awareness, I'm able to let go of a lot of my specifications in other manifestations because I was wrong in assuming that could only happen if they're Indian. That was my personal belief and limiting belief, honestly. So for I limited myself throughout that time. And another example is like my business. I had a plan that my business was going to be in the fashion industry for the longest time. And then I was like, oh, wait, I want to go into spirituality. So it's like I knew I wanted my own business, but I was a little bit assuming on the industry I wanted my business in. And it's not wrong, but it's realizing that sometimes we don't actually know what's best for us consciously because we can't fathom it. We have different layers and limiting beliefs that kind of push out some of our best case scenarios. So sometimes you might not know exactly what you want. And so if your 3D looks like you don't want it, it actually is probably rearranging itself exactly for what you want. However, if you get too stuck in being like, my 3D sucks, my manifestation isn't here, your manifestation can't come in on that same energy. So a perspective that really helps me is, okay, my 3D doesn't look exactly how I had imagined. Maybe there's something planned that I don't fully understand yet. And even though it makes me uncomfortable, acknowledge your discomfort, I'm going to focus in on what it is that I desire and give myself a scenario to re-tap into the energy and let it play out how it is. So it's like playing those little small mind games with yourself to adjust your energy and not get way too caught up in your 3D because it is normal. Like we have these assumptions and when you're in it, you don't know what's the true desire and you don't know what's like a little implication. It's so easy to see it after the fact, but while you're in it, it can be really hard to discern that sometimes. So writing out these different scenarios, and you can do this as a journaling prompt every day, is write out different scenarios of how your manifestation is coming in, what it looks like, what it feels like, and what your life is with it. And let that be an opportunity for you to open up to new potential and possibilities. And that'll also create belief in kind of the uncertainty of it all. And another thing you can do, and this is kind of a new thing I've been playing with um, that I've been really, really called to talk more about is realizing that their mask manifestation is a masculine process and a feminine process. And I think we have the masculine part pretty nailed, right? You do your spiritual practice, you feel your feelings, like you do all of that stuff. Like we have like this kind of overall structure, like manifestation as a lifestyle, 
is that kind of structure of masculinity. But then there's this feminine side, this feminine energy. There's a masculine energy of like, I'm doing my spiritual practice so my desire can come in. So my vibration can match my desire's vibration. But then there's this feminine energy where it's like that receptor receiving energy and that energy of, I actually don't have to do, I'm allowed to be. I'm not saying don't do a spiritual practice. I'm saying embody the spiritual practice, embody the energy of surrendering, embody your emotions and feel and be, and don't allow yourself to feel like you have to make your manifestation happen. Like how can you flip the script and be like, my manifestation can't help but come to me. My manifestation is so attracted to me that it is literally magnetizing itself towards me. How do you flip that script and get into the feminine energy? and tap into the energy of receiving. Because I think when we're in that more masculine energy of manifestation, which I think we need both, I think there's a beautiful balance. And for each desire, for each person, it is so unique. So you have to really feel like, am I feeling like I'm searching and chasing? Or now am I stepping into, okay, I'm in that receptive mode, my manifestation is literally allowed to come to me. Um, And notice like, have you tapped into the feminine side of this desire at all or no? And allowing yourself to receive. And I actually have like this three-step process where it's like state why you want your desire, manage your energy, receive your desire. And that third step is all about tapping into your feminine energy of receptivity. And I am personally working on how to um, articulate for you to tap into your feminine energy. I'm trying to create like some tools and affirmations and stuff around feminine energy to kind of help you get to that point, but allowing yourself to realize, and even just a quick affirmation that says, I allow myself to receive my desire. I am in the receiving mode. My energy is receptive. My desires are literally flowing towards me. And those can be just some affirmations that you say to yourself. And what makes you feel feminine? Maybe be more in your body, move your body more, Um, spend more time just off screens and off doing and just more being and living your life quiet time has been really, really good for me too. So those are some things that you can actually do instead of searching while helping yourself kind of manage the monkey mind that happens and all the kind of thoughts of, oh my gosh, my desire is not coming. It's not here yet. Where is it? These can kind of help you out. So I hope this episode was helpful. If you need more help managing your energy through the entire manifestation process, check out all of my tools. Like my entire purpose is to help you feel better as you manifest and as a result of that become a better manifester and make manifestation second nature for you so check out my tools i have a ton of free stuff like the podcast my quiz but then i also have a lot of offerings that are pretty low ticket so my membership as well as my step-by-step guide so explore everything is here to try and help make manifestation easier yet more effective for you so Thank you for being here and enjoy this in between. Find ways to have fun with it. Um, And I really hope this episode helped you. Thank you for being here. I love you. Bye.